My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you're interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of redoing the problems, and we are on page number 182. Please turn to it. Page number 182, problem number 212. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here's, what, here's how it goes. It says the digits of a two-digit integers are reversed. So we have a two-digit integer. For example, for example, we may have uh, we may have 73. And what are we going to do with this uh, two-digit number integer? Digits of a two-digit integers are going to be reversed. So 73 is going to become 37. And as a result, we are told as a result as a result the new number obtained differs from the old number from the original by 27. For example, in this case. In this case, 13 minus 7 would be 6, and 6 minus 3 would be 3. In this case, they differ by 36. They do not differ by 27. They differ by 36. Now, had it said 36 over here, had it said 36 over here instead of 27, then we know these two digits differ by 4. The question is, by how much do the digits differ? They, in this case, they differ by 4. That's all it is. Tell you what, let's make it more interesting. Let's do a bonus problem first. Let's do a bonus problem first. Let's start with not 27. Not 36, but 18. Let's do a bonus problem first here. Once we understand that question, we'll do the one in the book in a second, okay? So now, exact same scenario as before. We have a two-digit integer. We're going to reverse the digits. And once we reverse the digit, it doesn't matter which one, which one we start out with, which one we end up with. It doesn't matter whether the original number is smaller or the, or the final number is smaller. The, question, they are, the point is, they differ by... 18. If that's the case, by how much do the digits differ? Now the very first thing we need to understand here is how do we represent a notion of a two-digit integer in the language of algebra? For example, for example, let's start with this one here, 73 here. 3 is our unit digit, 7 is our 10 digit. So if u if u equals 3, we say, and t equals 7, if we use variable, if we use variable u and t instead of using x and y, let's not use x and y for variable because this will be easier for us to remember which one represents what. u represents the unit digit, the u represents the unit digit, t represents the 10 digits. So if u is equal to 3 and t is equal to 7, how do we represent 73? We can't simply write, we can't simply write t u. We can't just write that. T, t u in the language of algebra is t times u. How do we write 73? Question is this. How do we write 73 if u equals 3 and t equals 7 in the language of algebra? That's the question. One more time. How do we write 73 in the algebraic manner, in, with an algebraic expression, if u happens to be 3 and t happens to be 7? Well, let's find out, shall we? 73. 73, believe it or not, is so called because it is made up of 70 plus 3. Yes. And of course, 70 here tells you that we have 7 tens plus 3. 7 tens, the 7 is our 10 digits. So we have 7 times, 7 is our 10 digits. So instead of 7, we can write down t here for the, for the 10 digit. So we have t times 10 plus the u. Or if you like, if you want to make it look, look a little bit better, this can be written as 10t plus u. This is our original number. 10t plus u is our original number. 10 times t, 10 times 7. 10 times 7 is 70. 70 plus u, which is 3. So 10 times 7 plus 3 is going to give us 73. That's what we start out with. That's what we are starting out with. Let's make a note here. 10 times t plus u. And then what happens? Well, it's very simple. What happens is that we reverse the digits. So 73, 73 becomes 37. The unit digit moves in place of a 10 digit, and the 10 digit moves in place of the unit digit. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So instead of, if this is 73, which it is because we said that, we, we said earlier 
that T equals 7 and U equals 3. We mustn't forget it. If, so this is 73. Question is how do we write 37? It's very simple. 37 is going to be, again, U is 3, so it's going to be 10 times U, 10 times 3, plus T. 10 times U, which is 3, plus T, which is 7. And that gives us 30 plus 7, which is 37. We started with 73 and now we are at 37. So this is our original number. This is when we have reversed the digits. And now we are told that this quantity minus the this quantity. Let's erase all of this thing. This quantity, let's put them in the same, same fashion so it looks nice. This quantity minus this quantity, we are told they differ by 18. That's all it is. That was the most important part, that was the most difficult part, most challenging step for some people. Now, if you can figure out this part, it's a very simple problem. The rest is very, the rest is downhill. It's going to, it's going to, now it's going to go on like that. It will be done in three seconds. You'll see. So here we have 10t and here we have 1t because we're going to subtract it. 10t minus a t is going to give us 90. Similarly, here we have a u and here we have 10u and with a minus sign. So negative 10u and a u is going to give us a negative 9u. And that equals, we are told, that equals 18. I'll divide the entire equation by 9 and you find that t minus u equals 2. That's all. That's it. We're done. Now let's do the problem in the book, shall we? Now we're going to do the problem in the book. The only thing that changes, the only thing that changes is that in the book we are told that the original number differs from the new number not by 18 but by 27. So what do you suppose changes? Nothing changes here instead of 18 that differ by 27. So here we have 27. Divide the entire equation by 9 and now they differ by 3. That's it. They differ by 3. So scenario that we're talking about. But we do not know that we do not know what that integer is. There are several different possibilities. Then nobody's asking us what is that two-digit integer. You understand? They're not asking us what is that two-digit integer. They're asking us by how much, by how much do the digits differ? They differ by three. But they're not asking us what the integer was. There are several different possibilities. Should we list all the possibilities? Let's list, list, list all the possibilities. All the possibilities such that the, the two digits differ by three. So it's such that the two digits differ by three. Let's list them. Well, it starts systematically. How about, let's start with one. One and four, which, which, which when we reverse, becomes 41. It could be two and five, which when we reverse, becomes 52. See, one, one, two, let's do three. Three and six, which becomes 63. So we have, we did three, now do four. Four and seven, four and seven. 47 becomes 74, and then 5 and the differ by 3, 5 and 5 and 8 and 85, and now we have to do 6 and 9, which will become 96. And in all of these cases, in all of these cases, it doesn't matter which pair you pick, if you pick any pair at all, for example, for example, 96 minus 69, 96 minus 69, 16 minus 9 is 7, and 8 minus 6 is what do you know? They differ by 27. All of this pair, when you take their difference, 41 minus 14 is going to be 27, 52 minus 25 is going to be 27, so on and so forth. They all differ by 27. It's just that we don't know what the integer is. It doesn't matter what the integer is. The point is, they're asking us by how much do the digits differ. It, it doesn't matter which scenario might be there, the two digits differ by 3. Do you understand? Let's do one more, shall we? We're going to do one more problem, okay? Let's say they say instead of, instead of 27, they say 36. Well, if they say 36, this will become 36. This will become 36. You divide the entire equation by 9, and now they differ by 4. Now they differ by 4. So we're not talking about these scenarios anymore. This, is the case, this was the case when they differed by 3. Now they differ by 4. You want to do one more problem? Let's do one more. You get the idea. Maybe, maybe they differ by 45. Well, if they differ by 45, then their difference must be 5. If they differ by 54, their difference is going to be 6. If they differ by, it's a table of 9, you see, it's a table of 9. So we have 45, then 54, 
then 54 plus 10 would be 64. So if they differ by 63, if they differ by 63, then this would become 63. And how many nines in a 63? 63 would have seven nines. Then the two digits would differ by seven. Now, if they differ by seven, then there are a few possibilities. Because if they differ by seven, we have to start out. So we'll start out with one and eight and 81. Eight, 18 will become 81. And 81 minus 18 would be 63. That's one possibility. And then we will have two and nine. And that will become nine and two. That's it. Those are the only two possibilities. And so on and so forth. You get the idea. Let's do the next problem, shall we? Let's do the next problem. Number 200 and 13. Number 200 and 13 is a very straightforward geometry problem. Just give me a quick break and we'll go to the next one. We have a circle. We are told, here we have a circle. We are told that this circle is tangent to both x-axis and the y-axis. Here is the center, C. Let's call this point A. So it goes something like this. We are told that the distance from O, from distance from O to C, this distance from origin to C, we are told, is K. And the question, this is question number 13. So circle is tangent to both x-axis and y-axis. The distance from O to K, O to C is K. And the question is, what is the radius of this circle? What is the radius of this circle? Pretty straightforward, simple Pythagorean theorem is what you're looking at. So if this is the radius from here to here, then so is this one. This is also R, so this is R. We, we have a simple Pythagorean theorem application in an isosceles triangle. Here's what the triangle looks like. This is R, this is R, and this is our radius. Uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is the distance from O to C. This is the distance from O to C, which is K. And if you apply the Pythagorean theorem, we find that K is squared. We find that the K is squared. K is squared would have to equal R squared plus R squared, which is same as 2 times R squared. We are not interested in that. We are interested in R squared. We are interested in solving for R. So, 2R squared equals K squared, which means R squared equals K squared over 2, and therefore R would be, therefore if we take a square root of both sides, if we take a square root of both sides, we'll get our R, and this quantity is equal to R, and the square root, the square root of K squared, square root of K squared is just K, and on the bottom we'll end up with square root of 2. And this is our radius. That's all. The question was, how much is the radius of the circle? The answer is, the radius of the circle is k divided by the square root of 2. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.